you have this process, but you fight against reheating from the restaurant. And in dry times, they simply is so, uh, so well isolated that this is a very small effect. I think that's the main, main difference. Because Oscar Bainter, you know, he has also quite high, you know, as a, as a, as deeply in the sideband regime, but he has to fight this reheating. Okay, so, so these are kind of now a summary of both the coherent and the dissipative tools we have available. And now let's, in the last part, discuss briefly uh, what we can do with it. And the first uh, thing I want to do, so, okay, so I have now my beautiful quantum system. And, you know, okay, but you know, already quite a long time people knew how to, to prepare superposition of two-level systems, so it's made not so fancy. But it, it, I think in the 90s it was still, uh, you know, a big thing. I mean, this, is, this has this motional uh, degrees of freedom. So can I actually prepare motional uh, superposition state? Even if it's just a small cut ion, okay, it's not macroscopic, but just can I actually prepare this superposition state? And maybe, it's, you know, so you can think about, okay, so I, have, uh, I can use laser cooling, optical bumping, there really with high fidelity in the ground state. So now, a question you can ask, I mean, is there a way, I mean, can I prepare some fancy superposition state here, okay? So maybe something where a population and phases between a large number of these observations. And, okay, the first thing you, um, first idea you do, okay, so uh, I say that's easy, so I take this system, I first prepare a superposition state of the, um, the two-level atom, and I map this, I mean, here, uh, this carrier transition, and I switch to this you know, red side band transition, it's the James Cummings model, which will map this superposition back on the oscillator state. And you know, by determining the, the, first, uh, the first superposition state, I determine now the superposition between zero and one. Okay, so it's a uh, superposition state. Okay, so it's something you start with. It's very easy, so let's, you know, the next question is, I mean, let's, let's make, make more of this. So in the second step, of course, you will start to realize, okay, if I now try to take this superposition and create, you know, make another high pass over here, I will also affect this transition. And if I continue on, okay, maybe I can get rid of this problem. I see that these transitions have incommensurate frequencies, so whenever I try to, uh, you know, apply a few pulses, I eventually end up with a deep mess, okay? So motion, uh, excited states, and so on, and so the question is, I mean, how can I really make a pure motionless position state? And one approach that, you know, maybe uh, after Tommaso's lecture, I mean, you might uh, I think, okay, let's, let's simply use optical control, take a computer, if this is a <laughs> target state, and let it run. Okay. <laughs> so there, uh, there's, however, I think uh, another uh, I mean, elliptic approach, and uh, I think one of the Really nice, 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 nice idea, which was developed by Lord Huber in 96. And they simply said, okay, so I mean, we want to construct this, this state. Let's look at the inverse problem. Okay, so let's first uh, try to identify unitary, which maps this arbitrary state we want to generate on the ground state. And of course, unitary evolution, I can just invert it and I get the opposite regime. And of course, then the question is, I mean, is this any simpler than the other problem? Okay, it's just the reverse attention. And to see that this kind of really, uh, really helps, so let's uh, focus first on, I mean, uh, a superposition up to a certain level m. And let's uh, look at the first step. Okay, so I take this last uh, piece of uh, population in, in this state. And I can always now use, uh, you know, apply this red cipher pulse and make simple uh, whole fibers, flip all the population up there, and go to this state. So now I have this uh, superposition of these two, uh, uh, these two amplitudes. Uh, so this now, and I want to map this superposition now back on, on this low state, uh, because you know this, this can have phases and everything, so this is of course now some rotation, which is not just, just uh, a complete pi rotation, but you know, think about it, if I give you any state on a block sphere, which is characterized by these uh, two amplitudes, you can always give me a unitary which maps the state on the block sphere down, 
down to the south pole. Okay, so this is once you have a state, it's, it's not so, so hard to identify the unitary. So even if we now uh, this, this might require some thinking, given this, this, this superposition, which I create here, we can identify this rotation, which in the end maps us to this state. So with this, after this first step, okay, I have, um, uh, of course, I know that this, this pulse I applied here, and I also apply all the other, uh, uh, others, uh, other levels, and there it doesn't uh, map us just uh, as a nice solution because you know that uh, incommensurate frequencies. So I have created now a, a, quite a mess here, but what I've achieved, I've come to a state where I had you know, m levels populated to something which is now m minus one. Okay, so now let's let's continue and uh, address this state. And now that the reasoning is the same, so I start from something now starting with m minus one. I can have some population up there. But given these two types of uh, amplitudes, I define, you know, I can find a unitary orientation which maps this superposition onto just the population up there. If I have this superposition, I can find a unitary which more, uh, yeah, maps this superposition back on the population just in this state. Yeah. So is each step only acting on like the, the highest number of states? No, so, 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 so this is maybe uh, a okay, case so I should have drawn all these levels. So, so this is uh, also what's happens here. So this, this unit there is uh, just focus what's what's happening here, but of course it's it's doing the uh, same on all levels. Okay. But you know, so after this this first pulse, I know exactly the populations and the amplitudes and everything in mm -hmm. all these levels. Okay. okay. So I can, uh, I mean, not to keep track of it, but I can write a computer program in principle to, to do this for me. So okay, so now okay, I continue. So I can remove population from here. I reduce my system size further, and eventually, by continuing this, I will end up in the ground state. And by this, I have now, you know, explicitly, iteratively constructed the unitary, which has this, this inverse to solve this inverse problem pro, uh, program. So, given a, a certain position state, mapping to ground state, now I invert it and apply these parts in the reverse order. Okay, so this is, uh, I think, in the end, a very nice, really a uh, very nice nice idea, and can be used in the you know, parameter states. Yeah. But this problem with the same frequency is only it's a consequence that the trap is um, harmonic. But the trap is not really harmonic. Could we use the harmonicity of the trap? No, yeah. I mean, okay. So I mean, here it's of course. Um, yeah, so, so, so the thing is, okay, once you have anharmonic systems, you can, in principle, get around it. But for ion traps, you know, close to the ground state, it you know, really, really looks uh, harmonic. And, uh, you know, if you want to do the same with the harmonic also, uh, the microscopic system, you know, it's even even worse than uh, the anharmonicity is even smaller. Okay. So, okay, so, I mean, this is now, uh, yeah, okay, so, so this in the end, okay, can be used to create arbitrary superposition states. Okay, a nice tool to probe from physics. So, uh, sorry, so you, you completely neglected spontaneous emission, right? So, so here it's, yeah, so I will. Um, so, so my question is very simple. In, in practice, um, what, what is your, I mean, time is a limit clearly. So, so how, 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 how big a state? Um, okay, so this now maybe I okay, so I will sh yeah, with I so I mean people tried this uh, you know in very early mid nineties you know in the first when you really had control so I will show one one example where it's just then I mean a small I think it's just the end number one state um, so there you know you don't have a, a lot of space okay. Uh, with the superconducting cavities, I think, you know, in principle, I think they should be able to go, you know, about 10 or 20 now. And so it, it, look at this latest results from Steve Gurdon presented, I mean, I think there's essentially no limit. But okay, so, so this is... Oh, if you do, yeah. if you do this kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, but otherwise, you know, of course, in, you know, a large system is always, always kind of limited to a few quanta, simply because then, 
Um, okay, so I mean, now suppose, okay, I have uh, created my superposition state. The next thing, okay, you just publish this paper and claim it, then you might get killed as a referee. <laughs> so, the next thing is, of course, okay, now I want to prove it, okay, and I want to measure it. And, okay, there's a um, question you know, how, how do I measure this, 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 this state and what does it actually mean to measure now if I, you know, not just state, I have to decoherence, I have to measure density matrix. So let us uh, assume I have this, this motion superposition state, and, you know, in the first step, try to identify, I mean, uh, measure the populations in this state. I mean, can I do this? And there's also a, now quite uh, it's a very very simple but very uh, useful uh, observation. So suppose I start with you know after a superposition state in this kind of James Cummings system, and now I turn on so I'm initially in the ground state atom, and I now turn on, on this James Cummings interaction. And I told you before, I mean first it was a problem that these frequencies are commensurate. But if I now look at you know, the population, for example, in the silent state or in the ground state, uh, under this time evolution, I find that the population changes now with different frequencies. Okay? So each, um, essentially each of these levels has a different oscillation frequency. And so if I look now at the, uh, at, at the, uh, at the ground state population, it will, okay, it will oscillate with these frequencies, and the oscillation amplitude will be proportional to the occupation down this level. Okay, this is simply writing down the state and applying the change Cummings interaction, which always is, you know, stays within these, these subspaces. So, I mean, by, okay, so now preparing the state, switching on this, this interaction, and doing my measurement now of the ground state population, because, you know, this is something I have to do over and over again to get some time dependent signal. I can use now this time dependence of the ground state population to extract this Pn simplified to the Fourier transform. Okay, is this okay so this, this already I think gives us a, a, a nice tool. You know for example if you have now in this new superconducting cavities you prepare zero and one hundred you measure population in one hundred you know you have already know that's okay, it's not a thermal state, okay, it's a very unusual state. But of course, you know, populations, they don't tell you anything about the coherence. If you want to probe, uh, if you want to probe uh, the coherence between these states, I mean, this doesn't really help. So the thing, of course, you, you need to do in these measurements, you have to get, you know, full information about full density matrix. And, you know, in terms of this, uh, Number basis, you can either measure all types of row and M uh, basis sets, or another equivalent res representation to you know having the low, full knowledge of all the density matrix entries is to look at the Wigner function, you know, which also was defined in the, the first lecture. And this, you know, in, in principle, so the full Wigner function contains the complete information about the density operator. Because in practice, you know, you cannot measure it to arbitrary large alpha, or you might have some resolution issue. But still, you know, having it some kind of actual picture will give you almost essentially information about your state. So, if you use now this, this uh, now I think this this definition here of the Wigner function, uh, I think it doesn't really tell you anything about how you might uh, want to measure it. But there is uh, a very nice and uh, identity of the Wigner function. Namely, that if I want to measure the value of, of W, so the Wigner function at the position alpha, this is equivalent uh, to performing, uh, you know, sum of the populations, uh, but not of the populations of my original density operator, but the density operator which was shifted uh, space by minus alpha. Okay, so I take my density system, uh, density operator. I apply some force, which is placed by alpha, and I measure now the populations. And from this simple expression, I can get the value of the alpha. Okay, so this is now kind of uh, the summary. So if you want to do 
maybe at some stage with a non mechanical resonator, let's get the crude qubit up to the resonator. Uh, what you want to do to demonstrate you know, fancy quantum relation scheme. You use kind of this, this initial idea I told you, you know, pairs of arbitrary position states, so 0 plus 3 plus, plus 10. Uh, then you wait for some time, maybe you let some of your incoherence go on, and you want to see if mean, it has a, it's still the same state. Uh, so to measure it, you first take your state, you displace it by, by alpha, and okay, I, I mean, how you do it, I mean, it depends now a little bit on the setting, but you know, displacing state by alpha simply means applying classical force, so it's usually uh, quite simple. Once you displace it, you will measure all these populations, you know, using this Fourier transform techniques, I explained in a few slides before. And once you have the populations, you calculate the value of W of alpha for this relation. This kind of the, the basic scheme that was you know, uh, uh, applied to various systems, and here just you know, a few examples which, you know, which uh, did exactly this, this approach. So one of the first experiments was now in the binder group, you know, Showing first first time kind of a negative weaker function of n equal one state. Okay, it's not a big superposition state, but a fantastic state. You might know this this latest very beautiful results from uh, from the Roche group, which now did uh, along the same or very similar uh, methods to reconstruct the weaker function of a large Schrodinger superposition state and also that it decay. And then now you know since I think 2009 or around this time, you know it's really now to an you know, unbelievable level now in the superconducting NC circuits. I mean, this is, I think, 2009 results. Maybe we've seen these results from Steve Gurman. And in all these experiments, essentially use kind of this, I mean, sometimes different preparation techniques, but if they show the weaker functions, it's usually found with this state tomography. They need such as alpha. Okay, I think this is uh, uh, the end of this part, and I think it's a good time to stop here. So I want to yeah, we'll continue in the next lecture in a little bit. I mean, how do I now, so this was single ion controlled, how can I use now this thing to do some basic quantum information processing, some interactions, and this will be the topic of tomorrow's lecture. So I have to answer any further questions.